Hi, my name is Fene. And I'm Sabrina. And we are at the Culinary Kitchens at Bartow High School, also known as Jackets Restaurant. Today we are making Googie Turtle Bars. Our ingredients include three cups of crushed vanilla wafers, one half cup of melted butter, two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips, one cup of pecan pieces, and two 12-ounce jars of caramel topping. Not only is this a great snack for the kids after school, but this is also a great holiday dessert. First, Vinay is going to go ahead and mix the three cups of crushed vanilla wafers and one half cup of melted butter. Uh, one half cup of margarine can also be used for the same great taste but fewer calories. Binet is going to press the vanilla wafer crumbs and melted butter into the bottom of a 13 by 9 ungreased pan for the crust of the gooey turtle bars. We have to divide this evenly across the whole pan to make it an exact measure so when we put the good stuff on it, it can stick. <laughs> right. Sabrina's going to get the semi-chocolate chips and spread it evenly across the crust. And then we have some jumbo semi chocolate. You can also add milk or white chocolate for a richer taste or dark chocolate because it's healthier, it has more antioxidants and fewer calories. On top of the chocolate chips, Sabrina's gonna add one cup of pecans, crushed pecans. They've already been crushed for us. Okay. If you prefer, you can use almonds, cashews, or walnuts in the place of the pecan pieces. We have one half 12 ounce jar of caramel that we got to pour evenly across the whole pan to make sure it sticks to the pecans, the semi-chocolate, and the um, vanilla wafers. So that the bars won't actually fall apart when they come out of the oven. All right, well that's the final ingredient. So now we're gonna stick it in a 350 degree preheated oven for 10 to 12 minutes. I'm gonna move my dishes to the side. We have already prepared a delicious sculpture of how the gooey turtle bars are going to be prepared after they come out of the oven. A little side note, if you're diabetic, you can also make the same great dessert, but with sugar-free ingredients all around. Well, we hope you enjoyed the gooey turtle bars from Bartow High School Jackets Restaurant. Um, thanks for watching. I'm Sabrina. I'm Fene. Have a great day.
are you? My name is Annie Barbosa. Um, I am doing today brownies for our, our Christmas holidays. And I am from Venezuela. Um, I, I will show you how to make homemade brownies. Uh, we have candies that we can use like topping on the top of, of, um, of the brownies. We can, you can use whatever you like most. Here is raisins. They are cut to make them smaller. Here's walnuts. Those are chocolate with mint. Um, we have our grains. Here is one stick of butter, um, one, one cup of chocolate, um, one, cu one cup of Soft raisin flour, uh, three eggs, one quarter, quarter of cocoa, and one quarter, one cup and quarter of butter, of sugar. Um, I I will put my sugar in a big bowl. Then my cocoa and my flour. Okay, here I have the, the butter and the chocolate are already melted. They are really soft, so we will use it and mix them all together. Okay. Okay, next I will mix all these together and be sure that they are already together. Okay, so there, this is a great recipe that I have. They are my favorite. They are a cookie bars and they are really easy to make. Okay, we, they are really convenient because we can use whatever topping we, we we want. Okay. Then I will add the eggs and they are almost ready to go to the oven. Those are a recipe, really easy. You can you can use it in any in any time of the year, and you the kids will love it. So don't wait to do it. It is great and really easy to do it. Okay, it is good, getting great. Now I will I will add it in a grease pan to get in the oven. Okay, I have my my mixture ready and it have a really good look really good. Now I will add the walnuts. You can you can use whatever you like, like peanuts, M and M's, and uh, Reese's cup, bo uh, peanut butter cups. Um, it's really creative. You can use your favorite toppings. Okay. Now I will put it in a grease pan. And they will, they are really easy. You can see it is great. We have to extend it to have cookies.
okay good okay um i will put the recipes uh, peanut butter cups on the top that they can melt with the oven and they will look great okay we have a cup here of peanut butter cups okay now we are ready for the oven and it is 350 degrees for 50 or 60 minutes okay i hope you enjoy this recipe as much my family does right now i am doing a gift for my friends because i know they will love it because they are those brownies are a really great recipe and made a really great gift i will i am preparing a box for my friends I know they will love it. Thank you. I'm Alex Mahaffey, and I'm here at Winter Haven High School baking snickerdoodles. What you will need for this recipe is a cup of shortening, two and one and one fourth cup of white sugar, two eggs, two and three fourths cup all-purpose flour, one two tablespoons cream of tartar. Uh, a mixture of two tablespoons white sugar, one tablespoon cinnamon, and one tablespoon, one teaspoon of baking soda. You want to start out creaming your sugar and your shortening. Creaming is a term of just mixing sugar and shortening, or margarine if you use margarine, but you do not have to put real cream in it. You just mix it together. Now you mix the shortening and the sugar together until it is fully incorporated. You don't want any sugar hanging out or anything. It will be all mixed together. It will look kind of like dry snow. This recipe was given to me by my grandmother, which has been making it over probably 50 years. and. Ever since I've had them when I was little, I've liked them, and they're my favorite cookie, so I help her make them every Christmas. 
Now we're just about finished creaming our sugar and our shortening. Now what you want to do is take and put in your two eggs one at a time. Make sure they're not bad or anything. And you also want to add your vanilla. You stir this until it's fully incorporated. And it will look like a wet dough. Now what you have to do is take and add your flour. Your cream of tartar and your baking soda. And you mix that until it turns into a dough. It seems like a lot of flour to put in there, but it's really not. It's it gets all mixed up. Just make sure you have a big bowl to do it in. Now after you finish mixing all this together, you're going to want to take and cover it with plastic wrap and cool it in the fridge for at least an hour. There we go. Take and wrap it. And you put it in for now. Now through the magic of TV, I've already made my batter and cooled it. Now what you will need is a sheet pan. You can use wax paper or parchment, or you can just spray it with canola oil. But you want to take and have your cinnamon sugar mixture and roll the dough into little balls, one inch balls. Put them in the sugar cinnamon mixture. Mix them around, make sure they get fully coated. And then put them on the sheet pan. You want to make sure they're one to two inches apart at least one inch and this makes about 24 cookies give or take whether how big you make your cookies or small
these cookies are great for any time. Uh, my grandmother, she makes them during the winter, during Christmas. And she makes about, I guess, a hundred of them and puts them in tins and stores them on the counter. And whenever somebody comes over, just opens them up, sets them out. And we have cookies. The Snickerdoodle is a sugar cookie, just basic sugar cookie and has cinnamon mixed in with it. Now when you're rolling your cookie dough, sometimes it'll feel like it's breaking apart. Just push it together and start rolling it again. For the sugar mixture, you need about a tablespoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon, and two tablespoons to two and a half tablespoons of sugar. Take some of my pre-made dough balls and mix them together, go a little bit faster. It's also a good cookie to do with little kids. It's simple, they can do it easy. Just make sure you help them when you're putting it in the oven, taking it out. There we go. Now we're going to take and put these cookies into a 400 degree oven for 8 to 10 minutes. I'm Alex Mahaffey, thanks for coming. Greetings and welcome. My name is Chase Patrick. Today I will be showing you how to make egg-free chocolate chip pumpkin cookies. Now these are cookies that you would make if you don't have any eggs in the fridge, but you want to make cookies. So I'm going to show you the proper technique. Here are what we are using today. Two cups of sugar, 12 ounces of chocolate chips, semi-sweet, 
a can of pumpkin, two margarine, better than one cup of shortening. I have vanilla extract, one, two teaspoons, one teaspoon, two teaspoons of baking soda, and two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, and four cups of flour. Okay, now, right on. Step one, I shall cream the sugar. The pumpkin. The shortening or margarine, which is better. Both of them because it equals one cup. And the vanilla. Now I shall mix this together. Now make sure that you're mixing everything. Don't leave anything out. Get all the sugar and everything. Now it might look a little funny, but you haven't added everything yet. Now, I recommend margarine because it's a lot e it's a lot better than shortening and it'll give it a greater taste. I'm almost done here, so this should look like bits and chunks, not too much. Okay. Now, step two. I will mix I will mix the rest of the ingredients. Four cups of flour. The baking soda. The ground cinnamon. And last and greatest, chocolate chips. So this will look very powdery because of so much flour, but it should turn out brown, kind of like peanut butter, kind of tastes like it too. You want to make sure you get everything mixed, including the chocolate chips, because that's what makes it the best. Make sure you get under it. Doesn't look perfectly like peanut butter, but that's what you use. Okay, now you will take, don't take too much, but take maybe about just this much, not too much, and roll it up in a ball. Looks like a ball, put it on the cookie sheet. And do that for, until you run out. Which should serve about mm, 30 cookies. That might sound a lot to you, but trust me, it's not. Now this can get sticky, that's why I'm wearing gloves. Now you want, you might, depends on how big your cookie sheet is, you might want to put at least a dozen or 16, counting if you have bigger ones, onto a cookie sheet. Mm. 
Don't these don't have to be perfect, but now I'd say you'd need about mm, a, a tablespoon and a half or two. I use more to make your cookies. Now on mine, since mine is a regular size one, regular size cooking sheet, I will put four on each, four by three, which will make 12 good even cookies. Now this is great for Halloween and it can be good for Thanksgiving, which I think it'd probably be better than pumpkin pie. And when you make these, if you don't like pumpkin, you'll probably like these cookies because you don't exactly taste the pumpkin. You might taste some, but not very much. Okay, our next step, let me take off my gloves here. Now, I'm going to put these in the oven, like so. Now this oven will be preheated at 375. Okay, now these cookies will bake 12 minutes to 12 to 15 minutes at 375. Well, I hope you enjoyed this segment and I recommend these cookies because they are great for the holidays and make sure to invite your friends over because these are great for parties. Thank you, see ya. Hi, this is Cameron and this is Cooking with Cameron and today we're going to be making Neiman Marcus cookies and we're going to start off by creaming one cup of butter um, one cup of granulated sugar and one cup of brown sugar You want to cream these until they're combined and you don't want to see like clumps of butter in there. Alright, that should be good. And then into a separate bowl, you're going to crack two eggs. Just into a separate bowl so that we make sure don't get any shells in there. And then to the butter, you want to add 
the two eggs. You also want to add one teaspoon of vanilla and then combine that. All right, earlier I ground two and a half cups of oatmeal and then you want to add the oatmeal gradually. And then you want to add two cups of flour. a half teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of baking soda. If it gets a little messy, that's fine. And then once that's combined, you want to add 12 ounces of chocolate chip morsels. and then combine that together. All right, after that's done mixing, ugh, it's a little stiff. It should be stiff. Then you want to take your blender out, and then you want to grab a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper. And just using a small scoop, scoop out, scoop out little balls into onto the parchment paper, about two inches apart. And then after you have a, your cookie sheet filled, you're going to put this into a 375 degree oven for 10 minutes. And then after they come out, you want to let them cool for 5 to 10 minutes. All right, I already have a plate full right now of the cookies after they bake for about 10 minutes and cool for mm, 3 to 5. Should feed, makes about a dozen cookies. They're good for parties or weddings or whatever you feel like making them.
Welcome, this is Homemade Cooking with David Morris, and today I'll be making chocolate crinkle cookies. The uh, first ingredients we will need today was one fourth a cup of vegetable oil, one cup of flour, two squares of semi sweet baker's chocolate, you need one cup of sugar, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of vanilla, one fourth a teaspoon of salt, and half a cup of baking uh, powdered sugar to roll your dough in, and two eggs. All right, um, I've already began. Today I went and already, already melted our chocolate. It's gonna be needed for our oil mixture. Right now, you wanna bring your oil, your sugar, and put your chocolate into the mixer. First, you might wanna put your uh, mixing utensil on first though. All right. Hot. Watch out for this. It's pretty hot. Woo. You want to make sure you turn off your wa your boiling water over here because if it starts to boil over, it can really get you. And now add in your oil. Add in your sugar. And now you want to put it up to mix. You want to uh, you want to blend this until it gets into a, a combines to a sugary mixture. It'll, it's going to be kind of creamy. When you get that, while that's mixing together, you want to get you a separate bowl. Take all your dry ingredients, your flour, your baking powder, and your salt. You want to mix them together in a separate bowl. And this allows you so when you go to mix it in with your oil mixture, it'll, it'll combine a lot easier. Get you something to mix it up pretty good. Get this. You might want to turn this down a little. You want to gradually just mix this in. Not too fast or it's going to fly up everywhere. Get all that in. You might want to just move some of these things out your way to get in the way. Yep, I made some of these cookies last weekend for my little football team I coach on the weekends. Man, they loved them, Tony. Cookie you can make for any kind of occasion. You know, if you're just chilling with your friends or anything like that. They're a really good cookie. Um, now this is mixing together. You want to add in one egg at a time. Make sure you throw these away. Get kind of messy. Wait till that gets the, it's gonna start thickening up and getting a little bit creamy. Then you wanna add your vanilla in. We get that in. Just let it mix pretty good. Make sure you ain't got no chunks or any of that dry ingredients still in there. When you get that, you can lower it down and you can unhook your hook. Take your dough out. It's going to be really thick, so sometimes it will be hard to get all your stuff out. See, uh, I already came through today, and uh, I made sure that I had another batter ready. I'm going to go over here and get it. Get. Ah, there we go. And it's going to be cold, so be ready. And uh, get you a a baking sheet and put some parchment paper on it. Get you a small scoop. You want to get some powdered sugar. And uh, just say for cleanness, you want to put some gloves on. My luck, I didn't have any white gloves, so I'm going to have to wear 
this today. And uh, use this, gonna get you a scoop out. You're gonna put it in your flour, roll it around. You know, make sure you place them like two inches apart. That that's about good. They don't, they're gonna be a small cookie, but they they like to expand when they get hot. So get you a couple like this. And we get that. You know, once you fill this up, that should be good. After you get that, and after you put them, put them in, this will be your finished product. They're, they're a very good cookie, good for any kind of occasion, like I said, you know. Even, they could be a seasonal, you, know, you can use them for Christmas, so you, you can even change the name, you can call them chocolate Kringle cookies, you know, like Santa Claus or something. But uh, this will be your final, your finished product. And this has been Cooking with David, so thank you. To cooking with a kick. Today you're going to be cooking with Elaine and Katie. Today we will be cooking Mexican wedding cookies. What you'll need for this, um, these cookies are one cup of margarine, half a cup of powdered sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla, two cups all-purpose flour, a half a cup of chopped pecans, half a, uh, half a teaspoon of salt. First you want to cream the butter, the half a cup of powdered sugar, and the vanilla in a large mixing bowl. While she's doing that, I'm going to combine the flour, pecans, and salt in a separate bowl. While she's mixing these on the lowest speed, I'm going to add these dry ingredients slowly. Let these, all these ingredients combine. Once it's mixed well, get a small scoop and scoop out the dough. Place on an ungreased cookie sheet lined with parchment paper.
oven on 325 degrees for 20 minutes. Once they come out, roll in powdered sugar. We have our final product right here to show all of you. These cookies are so good, they can even make a bad guy turn good. Thanks for cooking with Katie and Elaine.